John, this is a start nobody expected from these two clubs here tonight. No, but you know what? It also, if you take a look at the the previous meetings between the clubs. And here comes Morris into the 18. Morris the shot, finds the back of the net. City takes a 1-0 lead. Ben Morris. Blue City has had into their attacking third, and they've come back and moved the ball really well for a goal. Morris just beats his man. The keeper comes out. Morris makes him commit and slots it home. And City have a deserved 1-0 lead. He is in that sweeper keeper role. There's no sitting back. Reese Williams takes it away and now gets it back from Suarez. Reese Williams turns on the Jets. Williams in. The cross redirected into the back of the net. It's 2-0 City. Reese Williams made a play. And Detroit City pads the lead. To get possession. Let's take a look. Here's the pickpocket in midfield. Williams waiting the one-two. Plays it down the line. And he, his defender turns the wrong way. He uses the opportunity to turn on the Jets. And the defender's trying to come back and make up for his mistake. And he becomes the redirector that puts it into the net. And Pop, this is where, you know, you're going to start seeing RGV's had a lot of success just defensively. They're so hard to break down. Really important for FC Tulsa to pull them away and create that space. Ball displayed into the box on the ground. It's there in an early goal. And FC Tulsa strikes in the seventh minute. Oh, and we are off to the races. Just like that. It's Yosef who puts FC Tulsa in front. You were just talking about being able to break down this back line, and there's the ball that you talked about. Somehow was able to make its way through. Standing straight over it. Hops to his left, approaches, and sends it to the back of the net. Kept the keeper guessing. Derek had no idea where he was going. And FC Tulsa takes a 2-0 lead as Philip Goodrum gets credit for the goal on the PK. Up with an unbelievable amount of confidence. Take a look at this penalty kick. Really cheeky. Just chips it right up. Coronado plays it out wide. Looking there, header towards the back post. And RGV has been able to strike here in the 74th. And we talked about it the entire night. If they could just find a way to pull one back. And Galindras finds the back of the net for RGV, and they did a great job to get that ball out wide and an excellent cross. A couple of times, Jamali Wade has been called upon for Bob Lilly's group. In these first 10 minutes, Barajas from the corner for the battery. To a dangerous area, and it's headed in! The battery strike first. Palma's header gives Charleston the lead past the 10 minute mark. Keep mentioning it, Sean. The shields, the back line for the Riverhounds needs to be better. So easy, you can't give a player like Palma about eight yards out of his own box, be able to rise up, guide it into that far post. Terrific start here for the home side for Charleston Battery and Ben Pierman's boys. Wait clears the lines for Pittsburgh. Well, let's tap forward to Williams. Flag is staying down for now, and Williams scores. Charleston lead by two goals to nil. Well, it looks initially like Augie Williams may have been offside, but the goal's been given, and the battery are 2 0 up. Top of your screen, you're going to see Mike Deschamps a bit slow in stepping up with his center back. But I think Augie Williams is caught offside about by the yard. Lino sees it, doesn't raise his flag right there. I think it's clear and obvious, the center fo forward, but take nothing away from that finish. 1v1, as Waits coming off of his line, closes up his hips at the last second, just. Barajas tried to wriggle his way through. Pittsburgh closed him down. And now Williams could be in again here for the battery. Williams saved by Waite. 
And on the follow-up, it should be three. It is three. Well, Jamali Wade kept the first one out. But the second is a very nice finish in the end. Avila makes it 3-0 to the battery. Ben Pierman's boys are in dreamland. It's 3-0. Play off the shoulder of their opposing center backs. Good things happen for Augie Williams as he gets a bit of luck. But talk about his body control. Put himself between him and Mike DeShields. And as the center back needs to let him go, big time save from Jamali Wade. But talk about composure from Avila as his ball pops off. Do you understand? Use the momentum against Ardonia is there, sends him back. Against the Riverhounds, they did get a little bit, but it really has been the performance as a whole that has stood out. Shields was booked for that last challenge, and now Pittsburgh look to get one back, and they do! The former Charleston Battery player, DZ Harmon, with a scorching effort, and the Riverhounds have a goal back with 20 minutes to play, it's 3-1. Haunt them. They want to be expansive. They want to get numbers in around that 18 yard box, but give credit to Blackstock. First of all, great first touch. And as he just rolls this ball into the path of DC Harmons, there's information on this ball. You need to hit it first time. Just Maxi Rodriguez to Ben Morris. Suarez making a run on the left side. Suarez has it. Reese Williams moving up as well. Suarez is going to take this one himself. Suarez, the cross! It's in the back of the net! Suarez on the redirection put City up 1-0. This goal brought to you by Salim and Dental. That's why he was traded for and he just paid dividends. I'll do this myself. Beats a guy, uses him as a screener and puts it off the defender. That'll be an own goal. But he put himself in a position to get the defender to use him to and to commit, and it bounces past the sprawling keeper. And Dario Suarez. But Tommy Soon was saying, you know, that's what you enjoy playing against a team like this. There's Maris turning and giving it to Ownby. Ends up with Maris once again! Dylan Maris, 1-0, Luce! Fantastic strike from Dylan Maris. They have a good work around the fringes of the box. Have a look at it again. Nice little turn there from Maris. And as it comes out, Ombi steps in. He looks for Maris. And then Maris just gets it from the defender. But what a good turn and strike. Because Matt Van Opel, no chance whatsoever. And he's a quality player, Dylan Maris. And he can, he can score goals. And this time he takes the opportunity. Edge of the box, 18 yards. Our goalkeeper doesn't even dive. That's how good that finish is. Saturday, Lou City is going to be hosting rival Indy 11 in the annual Fill the Fam game, where they're hoping to set the attendance record here at Lynn Family Stadium. They did it last year against Tampa with 14,673 and hoping for more this year as we are level. Juan Agudelo's fourth of the year, 1-1. One, one. How the marking is, ball whipped in from Corcoran. Juan Agudelo with a diving header, looks like he lost his marker, got to the near post. Big Martin Powers is in that area. When the ball comes, he sort of goes towards it, but it's Manny Perez who seems to be beaten to the ball. And that's a real blow for Danny Cruz and company. Could it be a lot tighter than they were last time around? So let's see if they can do better with this one. Another low ball sent in, bounding through again and in! Well, we just said it, you've got to be tighter in the corner and Cronjale gets the winner, Tom Sohn said. He makes his aggressive subs to win games and it seems to have worked out, but once you let it go past the near post, then it's very difficult to defend. You've got to get a body ahead of everybody else. And Cronjale, as it comes to a little back heel, actually, for a, for a center back, that's a good finish. Live action, corner kick in, and Jelani Peters goes down. And another save, no! It's inside the post! Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> and just like that, Emerson Hindman will take it.
will take it. In the sixth minute. Turn it around the post. The sidewinder and Shuttler. It took a big weird bounce. Yeah, a little. It bounced over the keeper. Shuttler was going low and it jumped up on him. And Heidman, like you said, it doesn't matter how you get it. Yeah, we and that, the goal was gaping. Memphis yeah. catching a break. We'll see if they'll make Orange County pay. Here's Kisiedu, top of the box. He can curl one toward the back post. Here's oh, Buckmaster! What a goal! He drills the volley. What a strike! 901 FC! Buckmaster, the shot master, doubles the lead 2 0. The ball. Brilliant what, ball. What a ball from Kisiedu! Rattles underneath the crossbar. Buckmaster, a certain finish. The degree of difficulty off the charts. What a goal. There's another ball through. It's Iloski. Iloski, and he pulls one back for Orange County just like that. And that's what? why the league yeah. is afraid of this man. He's anywhere, anytime. Milan Iloski. Great little ball. Takes it on the half volley, and just before yeah. Romig gets there, Romig goes low, Iloski goes high. Look at that touch. Absolutely brilliant. If he strikes it harder, he. Oh, and a nice pass by DaCosta to keep it going for Memphis. Good sliding challenge, though, by Dogman. Here's a ball by Kyle Scott. He's got McNulty. McNulty plows through one defender, two defenders, and then dribbles it one more time and then touches it home underneath Andrew Romig. And just like that, this match is tied in the 32nd minute. That was strong work by Mark McNulty, but it all started back 60 yards up the field with a terrific ball by Kyle Scott. Great ball. Two center halves are caught. His strength to stay on the feet. No one could touch him. Tried. Just, it's, I mean, it's well done for McNulty, but it, again, it's, again, I, it's a poor, it's a poor finish if, you, if you're Stephen Glass. He, he won't be happy with that. Two center halves are just caught ball watching. And prop temporarily out of danger by Nakeem. Fernando, middle of the pitch, don't see him there very often. Chipped over, there's one touch, there's oh, two touches. Yes! Stays in play, but not for long, because Rodrigo da Costa buries the biscuit! Yep. Look at Heidman come through, Powers comes crashing through, everybody goes down, da Costa's the first one up, and to the winner goes the spoils, and that spoil is another Chick-fil-A Mid-South goal. Da Costa, his seventh of the season. Memphis somehow able to unlock Orange County. And now there's another pass left begging by Memphis, this time by Malloy. Here comes Dogman. Dogman can shoot from there. Oh, there's a deflection. It's oh. an own goal. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. If he leaves it alone, it's an easy pickup, maybe even played with the feet by the keeper. Here's another look at it. it. Takes a rip from 20 yards. Nothing Drew Roman can do about it. It's just. Yeah. It would have been a simple save down low. So unlucky again. Like, just. That is intercepted. And now here comes Orange County. They got help on the left side. Plenty of help. Is he on? Assistant referee's flag stays down. There's a shot and a goal for Orange County. Does the flag stay down? Watching, watching, watching. It stays down. And after having a two goal lead in the first half evaporate, ending a man down, Memphis yeah, 901 on. FC now trails for the first time tonight. I think Jelani Peters keeps him on. If we have a moment, let's take another look at that uh, from a, a... It's arriving at the beginning of last year. Touch from Hernandez. Finds Bruce. Here's Moreno now. Moreno finds Swartz. Harry Swartz has opened up the scoring. 45th minute. It's the Boston native Harry Swartz. Scoring his third goal of the season to open it up on Meow Wolf night. In the league, Harry Swartz 
has opened up the scoring here tonight, unlocking the league's stingiest defense here in the 45th minute. And you can see the composure there. He even gets a little tug of his jersey there. Maybe it was Sanchez last ditch. And it's just there. You can see the goalkeeper just can't quite get across. Slight. He's got options. Daniel Bruce now. Picked up by Connor Donovan. Finds Rivas. Here's the Albuquerque native, Rivas. Moreno now. Moreno! Scores his sixth goal of the season. New Mexico up 2-0 on top of the West Sac Republic. Here we have another look on this TLC replay. El Sayahin firing home, unlocking the Sac Republic defense for the second time here this evening are the black and yellow. They're the first club this season. So it sounds like Sacramento may be making some subs here as New Mexico still asking questions around the 18. Here's Hernandez, Moreno now, left footed cross. Ball bouncing around, falls to Hernandez, one times it, it's three nil. New Mexico are on fire here on Meow Wolf night. Oh, the little dance by Hernandez as well. Get him signed up to a longer contract. Swartz in the 45th, Moreno in the 57th, and now it's this. A first goal for the club for Nicky Hernandez, and what a strike it is. Like I say, it's a, being in the right place at the right time is a skill, and you can see he just kind of drifts away from where the ball is. Thinks maybe, it, is there going to be a chance coming? Bit of fortune that it does find them, but does really well. It's so easy to sky that. Christian Sordo will come over to play this one. Sordo, formerly of RGV, for players on this Miami roster who have seen San Antonio in the past. Here's Segbers in the box with a chance, puts it across the face, a goal. The save by far, the rebound put in, and it's a good goal for the Miami FC here in the seventh minute. The visitors have come out, and they catch San Antonio napping on the back side and put it in for a 1-0 advantage. Sordo and Segbers initially on the creation. You're going to watch Segbers here making the run inside. And then SAFC just kind of leaves this ball out there. And it was Ryan Telfer. Who right foot, left foot look. We'll go to Petrovic. And why not? Petrovic deflected in! I believe it'll be an own goal. Eighth notch, and the locomotive fans will not care. Making it happen. We talked in the pregame about him needing to win his one-on-one -on -one battles. They set it up for him to do just that as he attacks, takes a deflection off of the Roots defender into the goal. Unfortunate for Paul Blanchett and company, but as you said, Duke El Paso does not care. Looks like it was Clementa, perhaps. Mark Lowry, John Hutchinson, Brian Clairhout. Never start with Brian or with Borelli on it. He certainly gets there. Chipped in wide, and it's in for the goal. What a side-footed effort by Lindo Mfeka to tie it in the 65th. All he needed was a chip. Mfeka. Oh. The chip up and over. Audacious. Lindo Mfeka, the South African. Knock into the near post. Rodriguez scores. Off the set piece delivered by Memo Diaz. Johnny Rodriguez makes it 2-1 and two goals minutes apart. Missed by the Southern New Mexico native, the delivery from the US, and all alone at the edge of the six yard box. Again, Benny the US. Barbier, just give and go, Wolfgang Prentice. Chips one across, and it's in for a third. All alone at the far post. Belais Baba in his first minutes of the match. All by his lonesome. 
And the only thing Prentice had to do was pick up his head and see who was there. I'm not sure what the breakdown maybe happened for El Paso as Popkovich was there. He's here as he bursts through there. It's Rito back to the right. It's right at Diaz. Bit of a rebound is cleared. Best chance tonight for Hartford. And might not be over yet. It's hit and it's in. Vegas was slow to step out on that. And from distance, a well hit goal. Juan Pablo Torres, the captain, delivering for his second goal of the season. Well, for me, I'd I want to see the replay because did it take a deflection? Because Leo Diaz seemed to be on his back foot. He is the, here's the right angle we need to see. Juan Pablo Torres has hit it. And it's deflected off Zali. There's nothing Leo Diaz can do about it. Very wide open game here. Good slip ball. It's Edwards. Good sliding challenge. Edwards back to his feet. He has scored. Spectacular balance there from Kyle Edwards. The substitute has the goal scoring touch. His seventh of the season. And Vegas had pushed forward to find the tying goal, and now they face a two-goal deficit. Cabato, I thought the pass was right. He played it to Edwards. It was the right ball in the end. A decent tackle from Zali, but unfortunately it falls straight back to Edwards. Unfortunately for Edwards, he's used his left foot, and it's actually a very good finish in the end. He, he was very patient when he could have just snatched it. Now he took his time, and good finish in the end. And for Renzo Zambrano, that is yellow card number eight which means he will miss out. that game against Sacramento as Tejada steps in and wins it back. Juan Tejada, Tejada! And he scores! It's a brilliant curling effort from Juan Tejada. That's what they've been looking for from the Panamanian and the switchbacks lead in Phoenix. There's no pressure from the switchbacks. Sloppy from Kretz and he comes across, but we talked about Tejada in the open. You go out and get him and he gives you work rate, he gives you quality, and he gives you the ability to produce a little bit of individual brilliance. That second phase, a little drop of the shoulder as Anguiano bites, creates a real estate by his own and watch the hips. Last ditch defending effort as he closes them at the last moment. Heads go up again, this one down, and it's finally in! This one will count! It's Danny Trejo and Phoenix have it level at one! Important set pieces have to be when things aren't going through the fluidity of the game. You hang around the barbershop long enough, Josh, you're gonna get a haircut.